It's going to be interesting to see how Nichols, you know, they're well known for establishing their run, how they come out in this first series here today. Jordan Jackson is toward the far sideline, number 16, and we're just about ready to go. The Bearcats in orange, Nichols in the white jerseys, red pants and silver helmets is going to go in the end zone, and Jackson will signal for a fair catch, and they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line, and that is where Nichols will scrimmage first and 10 from their own 25 under the direction of senior quarterback Case for Chase Forcade, a six foot 200 pound senior. And we'll take a look at the starting lineups for the Colonels. The only returning starter from a year ago, P.J. Burkhalter in the middle, and he played guard last year, but they've done an outstanding job getting this running game going. Mason Roberts and Garasco and Robinson will be the wide receivers, and Dontrell Taylor will be the starting running back. So from the 25, Forcade lines him up. Two receivers to the bottom of the formation. And they didn't get lined up quick enough. He had to quickly call a timeout before the play clock expired and before we even get a snap, a timeout. You don't see that very often with a Tim Rebo team because they preach fundamentals and consistency all the time. Yeah, so uncharacteristic because you said it there, they preach the fundamentals, and they're very a well-prepared ball club. That It takes a lot of discipline to do what they do, and, of course, you can see the confusion he, there. He's not happy. He thinks that they started the clock before they should have and didn't give them proper time to get lined up. And now we're going to have a discussion over on the far sideline. That is our line judge who's trying to straighten things out. That is Fred LeBlanc, the line judge. Our referee is Brad Van Vark. Headlinesman is Brett Baskew. The field judge, Jason Lede. Back judge is Brian Ernst. Umpire is Michael Cooper. Side judge is Tuta Salem. And the replay official is David Ames. So we'll try it again. First and 10 for the 25. Tally, the tight end goes in motion. Handed off to Taylor, and he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Four orange jerseys leading there along the way for the Bearcats. And this is what they did all last week. They took a Lamar offense that was averaging over 200 yards rushing. They were the number one rushing offense in the conference. Held them to 30 yards and 43 attempts. Give the Colonels a half a yard on first down. Still having trouble getting lined up. Orcade with a snap, setting up the screen for Taylor. Stumbles a little bit on his feet across the 30. He's going to drag defenders forward for the first down across the 35 out near the 37-yard line. K.J. Gray on the tackle for the Bearcats. Now you mentioned uh, the Sam Houston State defense. As there's the pass over on the left side, and they get it for a first down. They average 314 yards total against the opponents. So the, the total defense, which ranks them first in the conference, very stingy. On first and 10 for the 36. Two receivers to either side. Running play slanting to the right. Taylor's got room. To midfield. Lowers his shoulders and will take a shot as he gets near the 47-yard line in Sam Houston State territory. Zion McCollum with a hit that knocked him out of bounds. And that'll be enough to move the sticks once again for the Colonels. And you see the run there and the good block. Oh, we got a penalty marker back behind the line of scrimmage at the 32 previous spot replay first down white get the call there it's going to be a 10 yard walk off so I'm going to assume it was a holding it, call it, it against was the Colonels so wipe out what would have been a good gain of 15 yards for Taylor and set the Colonels up in Sam Houston State territory instead they're back at their own 26 first down and 20 now sometimes you say oh that's how he was able to get that run because it, it was a hold four man front for the Bearcats. 4K swings it out of the backfield, caught and hit immediately. Julian Gums on the reception. And lowering the boom was Jalen Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, great read as he had his man measured up. Perfect spot. Only a two yard pickup for the 28 yard line, second down and 18. 4K, as you saw earlier, complete 70% of his passes. He doesn't make many mistakes, only five interceptions. It'll be a running play, and this is Gums, and he's got no place to go. 
Royce C. leading the charge. Number 32, the senior linebacker who two weeks ago was the Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, there's nothing there, and C meets him head on. Those legs turn in and drives him back. Defensive tackle Sean Mustin helping out along the way. Third down and 18 for the Colonels. On the year, they complete or convert 49% of their third down. This will be a challenge here. Take the run. Forkade has time, running out of time. Throws. Nice catch up at the 44 yard line. Catch made there by Dion Ray, who's missed the last few ball games with an injury, but he's about two yards shy of the first down. You can see Forkade didn't, didn't panic. He stayed true to his pocket, kept looking. Felt the pocket, the pocket collapsing, and then he finally got it, and it was uh, caught there by Ray. He doesn't make the mistakes like you had mentioned, but it's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Winston Jones, who didn't punt at all last week in the win over Northwestern State, will punt here on their first possession. And boy, he launched a rocket. It drives Dwayne Williams back in the ball, will get in the end zone. It took a big hop, and there were three Colonels trying to chase it down, but they couldn't get there in time. So. Sam Houston will get the ball for the first time today at their own 20 yard line. And the Bearcats have been having their problems at the quarterback spot this season. Casey Keeler telling me before the ball game earlier this week, I've got five scholarship quarterbacks and they're all hurt in various degrees. Some of them can't play at all. Some of them try and get out there. And one of the guys trying to get out there is number 11 Ty Brock, the redshirt sophomore. It's been a carousel there at the quarterback position and because of the injuries. It's just been, they've been snake bit in that position. Such an important position for a football team. He says overall we've got great health except for their quarterback position. Brock on first down, pulls it, will launch it near sideline and incomplete. Looking for Corey Compton and a penalty marker comes in. Looks like we could get a pass interference call against Jarius Monroe. Now Monroe wanting to know why. I didn't think that I had him. So what did I do wrong? Exactly. But all defensive backs say that <laughs> doesn't matter whether they did or didn't. They always say I didn't do anything. The conversation on see if we get the call. Maybe it's not pass interference. Maybe it's a hold. Pass interference defense number 42 yep. 15 yard penalty automatic first down. Take the ball up to the 35 yard line and make it a new first and 10 for the Bearcats. Let's take a look at the HEB. Nobody makes a better impact than HEB. Their impact players today, Gums and Sully Lesh, the outstanding defensive tackle for the Colonels, Ty Brock, and Will Lockett, the safety for the Bearcats. First down and 10 from the 35 for Sam Houston. Nathan Stewart comes to the near sideline. Running play for Donovan Williams. Not much to go. Lowers his shoulder and tries to get the pile forward for two or three yards. For a host of white jerseys will bring him down there. Williams with a big game last week, 126 yards and 29 carries and one touchdown. Interesting to see how Sam Houston comes out here in this first offensive set, especially from last week. They really wanted to get back on the football field after losing that, that tough three overtime game against Lamar. On second and eight. Brock again to Williams found a little seam and he'll have the first down as he gets to the 45 and maybe the 46 yard line. Donovan Williams dragging defenders forward. Kevin Moore finally makes the stop. Williams very sneaky. Met contact but was able to wiggle his way in and get a first down run. Right back to the line of scrimmage of the Bearcats. And it's Williams again starts left going to cut back against the grain and right to run over a defender and will pick up a couple to the 47 yard line. Coming up off the pile is Jarius Monroe the man who was flagged for the pass interference and now Brock comes off the field. And Ryan Humphreys will check in for this one. A freshman from Sulphur Springs. He's their sixth string quarterback. He's converted from a wide receiver spot. Give it to Williams stuffed at the hole and be dropped for no gain. Maybe a little bit of gain on the play. Coming up shaking his head was Larry and James saying no 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 not in my house you don't. Now it's going to be third down and long. Brock comes back on and Humphreys comes out. 
Casey Keeler looking for the secret to getting his offense back on track after last week's game in which yards were tough to come by. Third down and eight here. Brock under pressure got it out complete on a crossing pattern to Brennan Tibbs but he's going to be shy of the first down he'll be at the 49 yard line but there's a penalty marker back in the secondary you might have a roughing the passer and Brock is shaken up and he's hobbling toward the sideline. The Bearcats don't need that. Personal foul roughing the passer defense number 16 a low hit on the quarterback 15 yards automatic first down. Sam Houston catching the break there with the rough in the passer. Unfortunately it comes maybe at a cost of an injury and that I look pretty tough right there. So the walk off is going to take the ball to the Nichols 34 yard line where it'll be first and 10. The penalty was called. On Jordan Jackson. With a delayed blitz and Humphreys is back in at the quarterback spot. He's got to Neil Carter to his left. Humphreys will just pull it and run. Read option right up the middle. He goes for five, six, and maybe seven yards before he'll be brought down. Man at the bottom of the pile was Sully Lesh, but Lesh is used to making tackles behind the line of scrimmage, not six yards downfield. Simple run right back up the middle. Swing the tight end in motion from left to right. Counteraction for Humphreys looking for some daylight. He'll have the first down inside the 25. Keeps his feet to the 15 and maybe the 13 yard line. Lesh over the top, running him down from behind. Standing him up up front was Perry Gancy, but when you have defensive linemen making tackles 10 yards downfield, that's not a good sign for your defense. No, it isn't. And it looked like that he expected to go down and he was able to keep his footing, put the hand down on the ground and keep running for some additional yardage. Now we got a whistle coming in from the line judge. The previous play is under review for the runner's knee being down. All right, and as you mentioned, looked like he might have gone down, so that was, that's going to be the determination. Was he able to keep his feet or not? I get a look at it again here from Humphreys. No, Can't, bodies in the way. You couldn't yeah. tell from that end zone shot. The other angle that we had, I think that there might be a, a better shot. Let's look at this one again. Good job there by the block, the offensive line. I don't know that it got down I, at the 20 I, yard I line. I don't think he did. You know, I think they're going to give him the extra five to the 15 yard line. But it'll so be this is the angle that we they... can see here. No, oh. it did not go down. I, did it touch there on that close up? It was really, really close. Oh, and. The, the key is the ruling on the field was he did not go down. Right. And you have to have conclusive evidence to overturn. So it's going to be interesting to get the here, call here. Here's the best angle that we have. Watch Humphreys, number 14, right here behind 52. And that one's not. Oh, I think it may have touched. I think it may have touched. Might have grazed it a little bit. and Doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. Doesn't take much. But at any rate, Bearcats are going to be in the red zone. They'll either be at the 20 or at the 15. They'll either be at the edge of the red zone or right smack dab in it. Such an important game for both ball clubs and Sam Houston State on their first offensive possession wants to Get a Make score a statement. here. Yeah. Make a statement. Because one, because the the magnitude of the game, two, especially as after last week of the offensive struggles that they had. And just uh, losing a tough game here. You know, and Tim Rebo knows that winning here in Nacogdoches has not been easy for his team over the years. And there's Casey Keeler. Proud of the way his team fights for 60 minutes regardless of what happens. Led by that defensive effort. The defense usually keeps them in ball games if the offense can make plays. And he says, with the difficulties we've had at quarterback, well, let's get the call here. After review, the runner's knee was down at the 20-yard line. It is a first down for Sam Houston. Please reset the game clock to nine minutes. 
So there you have it. It did scrape the turf right at the 20 yard line. So the Bearcats will lose five yards, but they will keep the ball. And just barely. And that, that was a very difficult view to and that, see. The, and that the last angle. one we saw was probably sold it. It looked like it may have just brushed across. But Casey Keeler says, our motto each week now until we get our quarterbacks healthy is just find a way to win. We don't care how pretty it is, how ugly it is, just find a way. Yeah, well, Humphreys and hopefully Brock is okay. He'll be, come back, be able to come back in the ballgame. But their, their job is to manage the offense. On first down, running play. This is Alex Williams over the right side. He'll pick up three or four yards. First contact came down low from number 16, Jordan Jackson, a freshman from Prairieville, Louisiana. Gain of three to the 17. A lot of funny names. We had to get some name pronunciations before the game for Nichols. Straight keep for Humphreys. Hit at the 15-yard line and driven back. Kevin Moore. Coming up from the safety spot to make a very sure tackle. Tim Rebo says Moore is becoming a playmaker as the year goes on. He's a transfer from Texas Tech. Looks Brock is going to come back into the ball game. Not walking too bad. That's a good sign. Didn't really see much of a hitch in his get along. Third down and five from the 15. Opening possession for the Bearcats. Brock has time. Now throws toward the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Sam Houston State. Brennan Tibbs, the junior from Canton, Ohio, with his first touchdown catch of the year. Puts Sam Houston State on top, six to nothing. Well, that, that was all made possible by the offensive line, buying time for Brock to be able to find his receiver into the end zone. They got some plenty of time here. No panic. And he throws it into the end zone. Hudson Pinnegar to try the point after out of the hold of Ryan Humphreys. Good snap and hold. Pinnegar's kick is true. Timeout on the field. Seven minutes, 53 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Sam Houston State jumps out to the early 7-0 lead over number nine Nichols here in Huntsville. Look there. At Brennan Tibbs, the junior out of Canton, Ohio, with his ninth catch of the year and first touchdown reception. Transferred here from Marshall, where he played one game for the Thundering Herd a year ago. 7 0 is our score. Sam Houston stayed on top of number nine, Nichols. Bearcats will kick again to the Colonels. And Connor Crow again tees it up at the 35 yard line far hash mark. You mentioned Tibbs getting his first touchdown. Catch of the year. I've got to feel good, especially coming over as a transfer. Gonna work your way into this rotation, but he's been doing that the last few weeks. Crow's kick high and deep. Waving for the fair catch way deep in the end zone. Jordan Jackson once again. And again, Nichols will scrimmage from their own 25 yard line. First time they had it, they moved it out to the 44 or having to punt. So we'll see what Chase Forcade and company can cook up. Nichols is old school, traditional, fundamental. Knock them down, run the football. That in motion on first down, quick little toss. This is Gums. Got a block on the edge to the 35 and out of bounds near the 37 yard line. Or Zion McCollum can run him out of bounds, but that's a game of a dozen. Well, the first time they had the ball, they had a couple of first downs, but then the penalty marker brought it back, and then they did. Uh, they were forced to punt for the first time in two games. There's first down run there of the first play of line of scrimmage, the second time they've had the ball. Julian Gums remains the running back on first and ten now from the 37-yard line for the Colonel. Gums will get it again. Go over left guard and find a little hole and get across the 40 out near the 42 yard line. Down at the bottom was Trevor Williams, who had a huge game last week against Lamar. 15 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss. And offensively for Nichols last week, a season high on the ground, 349s rushing. And the win against Northwestern State. Second down and five from the 42. Two receivers to the top. And Gums in the backfield. 
Bad snap. Forkade has to go and fall on it back at the 32-yard line. <laughs> well, the Sam Houston State Bearcats know all about bad snaps in shotgun formation. Tom, I was just about to bring up the point. Boy, that brings back flashbacks of last week, doesn't it? Ugly memories from last week if you were a Sam Houston State fan. And this time it produced it, the only touchdown of the game in regulation for Lamar and forced the overtime. Yeah, but this time here it goes in the favor of the Bearcats. And so the Bearcats digging in here with a third and long. Third and 15. Two receivers to either side. Four-man rush. 4K unloads. Has his man. Did he catch it and maintain possession? He did. Just shy of the 42-yard line. And once again, Deion Ray makes the third down reception, but shy of the first down. They give him 10 to the 42-yard line. It'll be fourth down and five, and Winston Jones will have to punt again. And Dwayne Williams will drop back to receive, standing at his 20-yard line. Good job by the Bearcat defense, forcing him now into two punts in as many series. Jones with a good snap and another driving spiral. Back to the 10 yard line is Williams. Here comes straight up the field to the 20, to the 30, still on his feet, breaking to the near sideline. And the 35 yard line tripped him up, and he goes down at the 37. That was almost a huge special teams play. He got hit. Bearcats with the lead on the ball when we return to Huntsville. 7-0 Sam Houston State starting from their own 37-yard line after a nice 27-yard punt return by Dwayne Williams. Bearcats will scrimmage. And this is Noah Smith. In the Wildcat formation has some room over the left side. He'll be tripped up at the 44-yard line by Kevin Moore, who's had to make a lot of stops. But this is the third now person we've seen take a direct snap in the shotgun. Yeah, Casey Keeler kind of alluded to that that was going to be an option of doing a, a, something different to give their defense a different look. Just shy of the 45-yard line, second down and a couple. Smith will take it and run. And he'll get into Nichols territory down at the 47 yard line before he'll be spun to the turf. Tackle made there by Christian Mims. Right up the middle. Creating space offensive line with the blocks. Smith who has worn 89 all season changing to 12 this week because of his play out of the Wildcat position going to try and sweep the right end. Got hogtied by the uh, jersey, not trying to cut back the other way. And he'll get to midfield and really take a couple of solid hits and lose two yards for his trouble. Big number 96 down there at the bottom. Glenn Thurman lowered the boom to him. He initially got hit right here, almost brought down, unable to bring him down. The jersey eluding. Where's the breakaway jersey when you need it? <laughs> Remember those? Earl Campbell must have run through a ton of jerseys back in his day. Oh, yeah. Two receivers at the top of the formation on second and 12. Ryan Humphreys back at the controls. Rolling right, throwing right, and throwing it too wide. Looking for Ife O'Day. Ryan Humphreys pass has incomplete. Didn't look like Humphreys was completely comfortable in throwing the ball on the run like that. Yeah, I think he wanted to run the football, but they knew, knew they had him back there, so he had to unload. I don't think he got proper footwork there. So now Ty Brock will come in on this third and long situation. Third and a dozen from midfield. Low snap, Brock gets it. Throws near sideline, diving attempt by Nathan Stewart. Is a little wide, outside, incomplete. And the Bearcats will be forced to punt. First time they look for Stewart in today's bowl game. So Matt McRoberts will come on to kick. McRobert has put 11 punts inside the 20 yard line so far this season. He'll be looking to do it again this year or this time rather. Mason Roberts stands back near his 10 yard line for Nichols. Roberts sends it away high end over end. Hits at the two and goes forward. He didn't get the backspin on that one. 
touchback will bring the ball back out to the 20 yard line where Nichols will scrimmage first and 10 with 348 to go here in the opening quarter and Sam Houston on top by a score of seven to nothing. This is their third time now to have the ball Nichols. Let's see offensively how they can have some continuity. They've gotten a couple of first downs but both times on third down time they've come up just a bit short on the pass. Now one time they were set back by a penalty to put him in a long yarded situation. Then the last time they had the ball there was the bad snap at 4K had wound up losing 10 by the time he could recover the football. New running back now is Kendall Bussey senior out of New Orleans. He'll shift to the right side to chase 4K and take the handoff and ran right into Hunter Brown. Brown's teammates will help him out and hold that to a gain of maybe a yard and a half. Flag after the play. Saw Jeremiah James adjusting his helmet there. I don't know if it came off in the scrum. Personal foul. Yes, Hands to the face. Defense number 29. A 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Denzel Number 57 Sims. for Nichols may remain in the game. Well, that's why the helmet came off. Yeah. Hands to the face. So walk the ball out to just shy of the 37 yard line. It will be first and 10 for the Colonels. Good look at 4K there. Preseason All Southland. First team pick at quarterback. Play fake has time and launches it deep down the middle and overthrows the intended receiver at the 25 yard line looking there for Taj Smith. Pretty good coverage by Craig Williams on the play. It's not a bad call on a, on a first down trying to go long try and loosen things up on that uh, front seven of Sam Houston State because the running game is really not establishing the rhythm they are used to so far. Yeah. That's why I said earlier, let's see if they can string some uh, offensive plays together here on first down. A couple of receivers to either side. Now put three to the near side. Swing it out for Bussey. He's got a convoy in front to the 45, and it'll be out of bounds near the first down marker. Hunter Brown coming inside out from his middle linebacker spot to knock him out of bounds. They say the foot stepped out at the 46, about a yard shy of the marker. Oh, Bussey with a good catch in the backfield, and yeah, he was out. Bussy had eight rushes for 102 yards last week against Northwestern State. Big third down and one here for the Colonels. Toss, Bussy tackled, got the first down though as he dives across. Once again, it was Hunter Brown coming up trying to stop the first down attempt. But Bussy a little bit too much momentum carried himself forward for the first. Hunter Brown, the senior out of Weston, Florida, leader of this defensive unit for Casey Keeler, very smart and consistent. You always find him in the film room. First and 10 Colonels. Their deepest penetration of the day is at their own 48. Taylor is back in at the running back spot. Toss for Taylor on the edge, same play. Chase Forkade took a shot after he pitched the ball out. Tim Rebo was not happy about it. There was no call. Forkade talking to our referee saying, uh, it was a little rough there, Mr. Referee, sir. And it really wasn't. As DJ Curtis backed off. But a nice gain on first down for Taylor. Gets him inside Sam Houston State territory for the first time at the 46-yard line. Now, Taylor's one of the guys that, of course, that they rely on 20 career rushing touchdowns. On second down, 4K under pressure, eludes one man. Stays on his feet, going to tuck it and run. He'll be knocked out of bounds near the first down marker. 4K on the keeper, run out of bounds by Denzel Sims. Denzel Sims knocked him out of bounds a yard shy at the 43-yard line. Well, 4K was about to be hammered by one of the, uh, the Bearcat ends, but it was a great block by Taylor in the backfield that allowed that to happen for him to get that extra yardage. Another big third down play here for the Colonels. Third and one from the Sam Houston 43. 
Gums is now the back. He's got, nope, 4K keeps. He'll be close. I don't know that he got there. Big tackle there by Javon Leon. 4K very upset at the mark. Yeah. And remember, it, he can lean, but if his knee goes down, it's where the knee is. Here's the discussion about the spot. The ruling on the field is that the runner is short of the line to gain. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number nine, 15-yard penalty. That'll be number nine's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Now, for Cade, after the play had stopped, he slammed the ball, and that's when the flag flew. Yeah, when he saw where the referee was marking him down. Let's take a look here. Yeah, you'd see the, the knee was down well before the upper body hit the turf. And that is, he's telling the line judge right there, and the line judge was having nothing of it. So the ball is going to go back to the 42-yard line in Nichols' territory and make it a punting situation again for Winston Jones. Well, once again, they string a couple of first downs together, but they don't get past midfield. Had an opportunity, but squandered it, and it's unusual that mistakes by Nichols are costing them. This team doesn't make that many. Jones a wobbler this time. Going to hit short at the 25-yard line and bounce out of bounds right there between the 25 and 26 in Sam Houston State Territory. 1-10 to go here in the first quarter. Bearcats on top of number nine, Nichols. Sam Houston State football at their own 25-yard line as we return. Nichols, the lone unbeaten team left in the Southland Conference. Right on their heels, UIW, Sam Houston State, and Central Arkansas. But that loss for Central Arkansas came at the hands of this Nichols team. Running play on first down for the Bearcats. And Donovan Williams had no place to go. Brandon Fontenot, the nose tackle, making the stop for a loss of one back to the 24. That's why the Bearcats feel that this game is so important for them to win. They're chasing the team right in front of them in the standings. And if it comes down to it, they'll get the tiebreaker. Second down and 11, Ty Brock back in as the quarterback. Brock with the snap. Drops it over the middle. Completed the 30-yard line. On the run is the tight end. Woody Brandom still on his feet to midfield. He breaks free. And Brandom goes all the way to the 15-yard line in Nichols territory. Woody Brandom, the senior tight end with just his eighth catch of the year. <laughs> Takes three teammates to help him up. Out of breath there it looked like, but boy, what a catch. And then the run. Taking the contact and continuing to get extra yardage. That's a tough kid. We have an injured Nichols player. It's their outstanding middle linebacker, Alan Pittman, who's down at the 12-yard line. But watch again, Brandon wide open. Yeah. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. four. And Pittman chasing him down. I'm not sure what happened to Pittman because he came from behind. Didn't look like he did anything unusual. I'll put it that way. But Woody Brandon with a big gain. 61 yards. They help Pittman up. And he's not walking too badly over to the sideline. Good to see. Exactly. Alan Pittman, three-time All-Southland Conference second team selection. And he's been playing second fiddle to upperclassmen at the linebacker position over the years, but now this is his defensive unit, the middle linebacker spot. He has really grown into it, according to Tim Rebo. So now the ball at the Nichols 15-yard line in the red zone for the second time are the Bearcats with a 7-0 lead. Time running down here in the first quarter. 27 seconds and counting. And Noah Smith back into the Wildcat. Smith just looks for daylight. Tries to bounce it left again. The jersey tackle. <laughs> and a flag comes in behind the play. Perry Gancy, guy who got the jersey and wouldn't let go, so now we have to sort out the penalty. Holding over 52 of the offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Colby Thomas, the left guard, the guilty party. It's going to walk the Bearcats back to the 25-yard line. Clock stopped with 14 seconds left. 
probably bring Brock back out as you have a first down and 20. Brand will be kind of a wing back to his right. Donovan Williams, the running back to his left. Brock says, just chill, guys. We're just going to let the clock run out here in the first quarter. So 15 minutes in the books here at Bauer Stadium in Huntsville. Sam Houston State Bearcats lead number nine, Nichols, 7 to nothing. 